Yeah, I think we'll get a good crowd for this one. They enjoyed you last time. Awesome. Yeah. And then you got a little special something for us, right? I do. I do. Yeah, a little activation and blessing channeled fresh, fresh from Krishna this morning. Wow. Come on. Here we go. Let's see. Okay, we got we got sound. We got Tio Guadalupe from Sedona, Arizona, my beloved sister, Angel Divine. And uh, who else is here? Paul Castaneda, who just took a trip to Sedona. Uh, Kathy Mason, who's on tomorrow. She's the last of five shows tomorrow. Sherry, Sherry's in the house. Sheree Blakesley, thank you for your love and support, Sheree. Uh, Mary Cooper's always here. <laughs> She's here for every show. We're going to have to get a fake. We're going to have to get Mary Cooper on here. Mary, you need to come on here so everybody can see who you are. Uh, Jerry Lastman, uh, Jeremy Lastman's in the house. He'll be coming on this month. Who else we got? Glenn Ray. See her tomorrow. Uh, Stacy Lewis, Tia K, Gaia Tree Singh. She was in the little jam we had last night. Jackie Farrell, Indigo Sky, Linda Winger, Cindy Aldridge, Jenny Smith, Eliza Whitworth. Joanna Childs is back. Uh, who else we got? All right. Simone Marie Say. All right. We got 27 people in the house. If these shows resonate with you, please share so we can stay above the algorithms, you know, that keep suppressing us. <laughs> and uh, until we can make our jump, hopefully this next month. And uh, we appreciate all your love and support and contributions to keep us going. We're 100% viewer supported at this time. But uh, every day we move closer to a more expanded abundance. Uh, that we call Soulogy. Welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. We're having a conversation today with Courtney Beck. It's uh, the redo. <laughs> Thank you. It's good, to, it's good to have you back. It's good to see you. Thank you for having I'm me. I'm happy you're here. We had a good conversation last time. The first time you came on, you, uh, you connect with Krishna on a very regular yeah. basis. Uh, and a few other divine essences, but uh, I don't know if you wanted to start with, uh, you sent me a message and said you were feeling something and then you connected this morning with Krishna. What'd you come up with? Or did yeah. you want to say it? Did you want to do it? Um, yeah, so, so Krishna, I, mm. I kind of joke that he's become like my spiritual father. He's like part of the family now. So we chat daily. Um, but yeah, I wanted to tune in and do something special for today's show. So. Um, I tuned in and I always say to Krishna, what do you want to do today? Um, and he came back with that there was a blessing that he wanted to share and also um, a heart chakra activation, if you're cool. happy for us to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Would you like to do that now or should we chat a bit first or what's your preference? It's up to you. What are you feeling? You got two things, right? You got a heart chakra thing and a, and a yeah. message, right? So well, I don't know. Maybe we'll um maybe we'll start and get everyone in the groove of that and then we can go from there. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Awesome. Okay. Let me Okay, let me just tune in. Get centered and calm. Okay, all my all my people are here, so we're we're good to go. Um so I've got Krishna, Isis, and two of my other guides, um, Mariana, who's an Aztec healer, and Mara, who's a white witch. So they're kind of like my spiritual family. So here we go. Greetings, Soulogy members, Todd and Morgan. We are grateful you have invited us here today. We will begin with a blessing, followed by an activation of the heart chakra for those who wish to participate. We will begin now with the blessing. For those who are joining us here today, we are grateful for your presence, your spirit, and your interest in furthering and heightening the consciousness of planet Earth. We are grateful and bless you for the role you are playing and the good you are contributing on Earth at this time. In times ahead, we will experience great sorrow, but we will also experience great joy and a rebirth of humanity itself. For those who are walking this path now with us, know that you are doing so for a reason and that you have elected to come here to earth to help share your energy, which is vital to people at this time. Know that you are important. Know that what you are sharing is important 
and that it is destined we have come together today. In times ahead, many will question decisions we as human beings have made in the past. What we are here to tell you today is that while we can learn from the past and our history, the mistakes and missteps we have made as we have learnt and grown are irrelevant. What is most important for all of us to concentrate on are the changes we can make in this minute and in this second that will change and affect our future. When a seed is planted, while we may look at past experiences of seeds that have grown in that place, we don't penalise the current seed for how the environment has affected its past growth. Instead, we look to the wind, the rain, the sun, and how each has affected the seed and how the earth has supported it during its time on earth. What we do not see in the world today is how the earth supports us like seeds that are each here to grow. Instead of seeing the earth as our mother and the being that nourishes us, we see her as a place to live, to plant our own seeds and as a being that we can own. What we must realise is that we are all seeds that lie within her, waiting to break free to the surface. What we must be grateful for and recognise is that we are each the elements that help each other grow. Earth brings us a series of experiences and a platform and place to learn. The role that each of us can play for each other and the beings around us is that we can each be the sun that each of us so desperately crave, sharing our light and our love with those around us. Like a boat on the ocean needs wind in its sails, we can be that wind that blows those around us forward. And like the thirst of our throats needs water to live, so can we be the water that quenches the minds and hearts of others when they're looking for guidance and support. The role the earth plays for each of us and why we must pay respects to her is that she is our blood, our tears and our pain. She is the womb we are all born into and she is the one that accepts our waste and what washes from us. She is our nourishment and our strength, but we can also be each other's nourishment and strength. We can also be each other's hope and the one that helps others through their own dark night of the soul and the earth's own dark night. In our time here, we will constantly question the role we are playing and whether we could do more. We can, but we must also take time to rest, as rest is important time for rejuvenation and also reflection. Today, Sology members, Todd and Morgan, we wish to share with you a blessing and activation of the heart, if you wish to take part. We will begin now, and if you wish to participate in this, please close your eyes. Allow yourself to dream of a better and brighter tomorrow for all human beings. Allow yourself to be open to a new tomorrow, one where all of the pain in the world has melted away and there is only love. Love is what fills us up and it is also what helps us learn even when we are in lack or abundance of this emotion. Allow your heart to open now like a lotus flower opens its petals. When the lotus is born, it is born of the mud of the earth and its beauty only emerges when it has been through the submission of the lake itself. It is born by moving through the muddy depths of the place it was born from and it will only reach and rise to its potential if it is supported by the water, but also by itself. The lotus does not question though if it can grow and it does not question its future in the same way that we do. Instead, it only questions if it will receive the nutrients it needs and it trusts it will reach the sky as long as it continues to see it. Do not question if your soul will reach its final destination, dear ones. Instead, ask what you can give others and what you may receive that will help you to grow in an environment that is not easy on those who live within it. What we must do is see our heart as the lotus 
and know that to grow, we must experience the mud to feel the warm breath of the sky and the sun. To grow, we must push through the pain of our own existence and of the experiences earth gives us to know that through slavery, we can become free. Each lotus travels the same path, but each lotus also knows and trusts that it will be supported in reach reaching its full fruition and beauty. If we are to learn from the lotus, we must see that the beauty of the lotus in not, is not in its final flowering, but in the path it takes to reach the surface. It is the mud that gives each lotus the nutrients it needs to grow. Just as the pain and challenges of your lives give you the strength you need to grow. See your heart as a lotus and see your pain as a vital part of your journey. See the water that surrounds you as light and see your own experiences moving through the mud as vital stories, information and insights that others may need to learn their own strength and that commitment to this path does bring the sunlight we all require. When we see ourselves as a lotus flower, we see ourselves as ultimately infinite and as a continuous cycle of darkness and light, beauty and struggle, pain and persistence. And as we unfurl our petals for all to see, we must celebrate not just the unfurling of our petals now that we have achieved beauty, but that our journey began in darkness and ended in light. Allow yourself to accept the energy waves of love I'm sending you now to help provide nourishment to your heart and to know that you are already a lotus flower and that you have already bloomed. The disconnect between the physical beings we are and the spirit we hold is all in our mind. The stories we tell ourselves help our journey when they are positive but hold us back when we believe we will be beneath the surface of the water for all time. What we must realise is that the lotus thrives at all parts of its journey to the surface and through to its ultimate bloom. Where we become lost is that in this life, because we do not remember our last, we do not see that we are in a continuous cycle of birth, death and rebirth. While you may feel this is the first time you have walked this path, in truth, you have done this many times before. Allow your heart to receive this extra dose of nutrients for the next part of your journey and know that as you grow, we are the earth that has birthed you. We are the water that gives you strength and also the protection while you are in your youth and growing. We are the sunlight, wind, air and environment that will allow you to see your own beauty when you make the last part of your journey to the sun. The lotus is both mud and earth as much as it is water, air and sunlight. We are each, each other's darkness and also sunlight and each part of us is loved, cherished and needed in this world, even when we are not in the form we would like to be yet. We wish you well on this next part of your journey and know that we have strengthened your heart today and also opened your mind to new potential. Please accept this blessing and the knowledge that your role and your individual personality, self and soul is crucial, not only to the growth of the earth, but to the growth of others. Your struggle, your pain and your growth is the gift that others need to grow from their own muddied waters. We cherish the offering you are making today and celebrate the growth you will continue to make tomorrow and for all of your lives and days here on earth. We love you and thank you for the opportunity of speaking with you today. If you wish for our help, all you must do is ask. We conclude this blessing and activation now and thank you for taking part. Krishna. Thank you. Wow. Wow, that was mic drop. <laughs> that was that was incredible awesome that, that was incredible anyone that heard it i know they didn't think it was incredible that was absolutely mind-blowing the uh, frequency the tonality of your voice uh, the 
that multi-dimensional voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt that I've never had anyone, uh, come on and, and, uh, that connects with Krishna. So, uh, Sology, Todd and Morgan and my friend Gop from India have a gift for Krishna. Okay. And this is, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do the melody. I'm just going to do the poem that my friend Gop in India wrote. I'm trying to get him to come on. I've been trying to get him to come on for two years. Amazing. This is a, a poem that he wrote called The Smiling Messiah. It's about Krishna. And uh, I was doing soul speaks. I was telling Courtney, I was doing soul speaks. I was about 15. I'd done about 15 of them. And, and, I, and I saw it. It's the greatest poem I've ever seen. Uh, and I love poetry. I've been reading poetry since I was a little kid. And so uh, I said, you got to do speak it to, uh, you know, just speak it to a recorder and I'll, I'll put it to music. I've got this new thing I'm doing. <laughs> and so he said, no, you do it. So I, I found this, uh, this really cool underground South side of Houston, uh, hip hop beat. And I, and I did a soul speak to it and I do it on the shows. I did it on the show last night. But in the middle of it, and he's got three stanzas. In the middle of it, I put a little uh, of my own little soul speak in it. So it was a collaboration. This is for Krishna. It's the Smiling Messiah by Gop, my friend from India, because I can't pronounce the rest of his name in a small part by me. When the calamities disturb my being and brutalities pierce my core, when I feel like a helpless warrior, when I crumble down in the chaos, when my heart and thoughts dry up and grow like a desert, when the greed and blindness create hurdles unmeasured, when I contradict myself and become weak and tired, when I think how to cry and I fear how to smile, when I think to myself, why am I like this when my concern is not all mine, all about things beyond me and what's yet to come? Now, this is my part. That's when I see the smiling Messiah, once the world's pariah living inside. Not hard to find all we need, all we have. Soul come to seeds, many breeds, can't you see? Souls to feed, death be released. Countries, colors, cultures all concede. Lead us to the promised land. One clan down for every woman, child, brother to every man. Where we stand, take command. Make no demands, ain't dying for any brand. One soul nation, cosmic purification. We are creation, all relations, one soul tribe. Truce out of patience, spirit sustenance, universal creation, not much to this. Find the innocence begins and ends with the laugh within us. We are the smiling Messiah. Now here's the last part of his poem. All I see is the beautiful healing face of an intelligent warrior, a divine avatar, a friend or sage for life. A musician for all mundane and divine souls, a smiling flute, pair, a flute player called the enchanting Krishna, Messiah with a sword called Smile, dearest beloved of the soul. I feel the place you reign and I wish I should inherit your never fading smile, the enchanting Krishna. Thank you for letting me share that. I had I had goosebumps the whole way through, and I actually felt um, I had quite a physical response and felt my heart open. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is um, great. Can I can I can I tune into Krishna and get his get his words? Yeah, sure. Yep. Uh, uh, welcome, Todd and Gop. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your light and your love uh, with our world at this time. Uh, your words and your heart and your sentiment are so appreciated by the earth and by us. Uh, we dance in joy at hearing your song and the unification that it has created and will create uh, through not only your presence and both of your presence on, the, on earth at this time, uh, but through the positive messages and energy that you are sharing through this show. Uh, Gop, uh, please contact me via Courtney as I have some guidance to share with you. And Todd, you may do the same if you wish. Uh, it would be a pleasure for me to speak to you 
uh, and I would love the opportunity to do this at your leisure. Uh, thank you for sharing your light and your love and your special kind of magic. Uh, we so appreciate you. And he's doing the heart. Um, yeah. Mm. Yes, we will take you up on that. I'll get in touch. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm all tongue tied right now. I got, uh, I'll talk to God. I actually sent him a message today. I haven't talked to him yeah. in a while. I put up one of his posts, one of his newest poems. I put it up uh, on my my wall today. It was uh, it was about the soul of rocks, and it was beautiful. <laughs> it was yeah. like you know. Like the uh, elemental, the rocks. I mean, it was just like it was. A, it was soul. It was soulogy. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, that's what I, I would call it. Um, yeah. yeah, that was God. That was, both of those things you did was just super powerful. You know, and and uh, one of the things that that caught me early on in the in the first part of the message, I, I and it just made me realize something. So there's all different types of us out there we all connect every one of us do this all comes out differently or looks different but i've noticed that there's certain people that have a really pure i mean uh, this is from my own perspective but like a, such a connection that their confidence uh and fortitude and commitment to it speaks to me because uh, i know that if that congruency is in their heart, which I know it is because I can tell by the way they deliver it, uh, they must have an in incredible connection with whatever face of the universe they're talking about. But what I've noticed is, and I don't want to say all of them, but several of them that I have a lot that I consider having a lot of, you know, credibility, at least from my perspective, talk about there's going to be some tough times. Yeah. And in my, in my, my soul is a stubborn, stubborn soul. And I believe that we are absolutely supernatural and unlimited. And so I kind of look at it like this. Uh, it's kind of like getting a fortune. So it's mm -hmm. accurate in that moment, but we have the ability to change it. And I'm not trying to change your answer at all because you haven't answered it. But my question was, on a personal level, do you feel that we're going to see uh, a pretty thick contrast between those things that would challenge us um, and, and our expansion. You think they're going to happen simultaneously? Like, yeah, like yeah, I do actually. And that's, that's probably a really good way of, of putting it in, in that it, I think it will almost happen into parallels in that. I think um, some of who we are will will fall away and i think yeah. some of us will will elevate um and i think you can see that in the world at the moment there's this tremendous rise in in consciousness and people stepping into their power and you know so many of the people that i see in my work are healers and they're healers waiting to be activated so there's this, there's this abundance almost tidal wave of um of love that's coming into the world but then i think at the strength of that love there is also and it perhaps it's even easier for us to see the contrast in in that there is still you know a, a fair whack of darkness in yeah. in the world at the moment and and yeah. maybe it is that contrast that helps us see it and make it more obvious than what it has been well well, you know, I mean, a lot of people talked about the great divide coming. This was like, you know, in the middle of, began in the middle of last year. Actually, people yeah. talked, Morgan talked about it the whole three years I've known her. But, but so, and we would think of the great divide in terms of, okay, this group of people's over here <laughs> and this group of people's over here. But, uh, you know, everything parallels. So it only makes sense that, and a lot like a lot of our journeys too, a lot of our wake up journeys, you know, we had this extreme dark night of the soul for two three four years while at the same time we're expanding in the light like you know leaps and bounds so it would only make sense to me that that uh we might see i don't know what it would be you know maybe i don't know if it's going to be natural disasters or what we call wars or famine or whatever the case might be to give us that that vast expanse between what's real and what's not basically almost like yeah. forcing us to to our divinity Mm. I'm divinity, <laughs> so I don't need to see that. <laughs> but uh, no, it's going to be. I, I think, and it just struck me when you said that because, uh, you know, I mean, in my gut, that makes sense. And 
whatever my beliefs are, my gut's always, you know, that's our instinct. Yeah. Yeah. How, how Krishna has spoken to me about it is it's, um, is that humanity will almost go down two different paths. We'll see half of humanity try and uphold the traditional structures that we have had, you know, yeah. for however long that time has, has gone for. And and then the other half of the planet will want to go back to living a simpler, yeah. a, a simpler life that's probably more connected to the earth. And so how he's spoken about it to me is that, as a planet, we're quite out of touch with the elements, so fire, you know, water, air and earth. Um, like even, even if you look at a box of matches, you know, we could look at, at fire very easily as a product and something that we just light and throw away, but yet fire has this incredible power and force that we underestimate. And so, um, you know, when Krishna has spoken to me in particular about Atlantis and what happened in that society, what caused the downfall of Atlantis was them essentially falling out of balance uh, with the equality that they had in their civilization, but also out of balance with the elements. So where the water previously had been, you know, it was it was almost like a best friendship um, that when they, um, you know, stopped respecting the water, that was when the water started to rise. And I think there's an incredible number of parallels with where we're at on Earth at the moment. Yeah, um, and yeah with how, how out of touch we are. Yeah. yeah. And anyone that's ever done a ritual with candles or... Yes. I like to do it with a little fire, you know, out, out in the yard or whatever. I've done a few like that. And it's very powerful. It's a very powerful thing. Um, it brings in, it brings to me. It brings in um, certain um, things into the visible light mm. that normally you wouldn't see. Um, you know, it's yeah. You're right about that. And there are parallels because I mean, if the lack of equality, uh, you know, came to the surface in Atlantis at the same time, I mean, it's all it's all the same energy. If yeah. you're out of balance, every part of your existence is going to be out of balance. Yeah. I wonder if as as this occurs, if it occurs in, in the in the two two consciousness, really, or two even two types of experiences, one, a mindset of an individual individual saying, I am divinity, you know, nothing can can kill me. I'm going to live mm -hmm. over here on this organic farm in this apartment with my wife and go down and pick food. out. Of yeah. <laughs> you know, and it just kind of happens. So you're almost like in a bubble. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to family, I talked to some family today and there's, I'm not judging it. I'm just saying there's, the, there's an, there's a energy there, uh, an old energy there. I don't want any part of, mm. so maybe that's, maybe it's as simple as that. I don't know. Yeah. And I, I, I definitely believe that, um, that they being the spirit world are en encouraging us to be more conscious and to try and undo a lot of the damage that we've done. Um, because I, I, I do think that naturally earth as a living being will rebalance herself. And I think the impact on us is how much, you know, how, how conscious we can be with that. So like in, in my own personal life, like, um, you know, at night when I go to have a shower rather than having the fluoro lights on, I'll put a candle on. But when I do that, I, you know, thank the fire for, you know, providing the yeah. light. And, you know, yeah. sometimes I'll even see little figures dancing within the fire. Yeah. And so if you take that extra couple of seconds to interact with the elements and, and just to give, you know, your thanks to them, like they are genuinely alive. And I think it's that Absolutely. relationship and friendship we have with them that, that I think will be key in our future with, however things roll yeah yeah well, i think we're definitely tied I, I think we're definitely tied to the earth there's some type of correlation or parallel there as we go she goes but she obviously seems to be a lot bigger <laughs> than we are <laughs> yeah you know? um but um and i think too one of the things i'm noticing in really not not even so much in my own life but in in everything I'm observing is the teams behind us uh, have a lot, a lot more influence uh, in our lives. Now the signs are a lot easier to read and accept and therefore builds a higher faith. So, so I don't know if, you know, the archons got moved out, the reptilians got moved out or whatever, whatever might've happened, 
or whatever. But there seems to be more visibility of, of our family, you know, our yeah. non-physical family that's uh, assisting us. Yeah, they're, they're definitely out there with billboards and um, <laughs> what are those speakers called that, you know. Uh, and, megaphones. Um, <laughs> megaphones, like they're, they're trying to get out. Together. <laughs> get your stiff together now. You guys they're, have been out <laughs> for too yeah. long. They're, they're definitely trying to get our attention. And like, for me, I yeah. believe um, that we're all channels and that we're all spiritual beings. It's just that we're so loaded up with stress and anxiety and we never actually give our, you know, our, our minds and our hearts and our bodies the space to accept messages. So often they're, you know, hanging around in the background trying to chat to us, but we're just so focused on, you know, Netflix and work and all of these like very first world problems that we have that they just, they, there's no airspace for them to get through. Well, the other thing I really loved about his message in the first part of it was when he talked about the past, the lessons or whatever you want to call it. And basically he said, that's just a story. Yep. You know, and I think that's really uh, what, what our, maybe our, one of the last things we've got to kind of pull away from is, it's an all or nothing proposition. You know, you either, if you carry one iota of the past with you, you might as well carry the whole past with you because yeah. it's, it's, it's all really every bit of the past pretty much, pretty much is, is meant to keep us small or mm -hmm. I don't know if it's meant to keep us small, but it makes us feel small. You know, I should have done this. I could have done that. I married this person and that one was better or whatever the case, you know, whatever goes on in our head, we're comparing people, we're comparing ourselves, you know, I shouldn't have taken this job. I shouldn't have worked so many hours, whatever the case is. And mm -hmm. I like that part of his message where he just said, let that go. Just let it go. Yeah. Cause if you're, if, if you think of it as like a doorway, if you've got one foot, you know, on the other side of the door and the other foot on this side, trying to walk through, then it's just this kind of <laughs> hovering in the that. middle. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's limbo. <laughs> So if you can, um, if you if you can let that go and and walk forward, and I, I know that's a very easy thing for me to say that it's it can be very difficult for us to to walk forward and to let go of the past, but I, I do think there's a lot of power in understanding that we can often get so wrapped up in the stories and in the story of our identity that if we can think of yeah. that as more of a concept and try and let it go, then we actually have a shot at moving forward and seeing what's next. I think, I think one of the places too, that, uh, that we, that we have to get straight is that be, because you're right. I mean, we, we are not this identity. Okay. So in the great paradoxical teaching of the universe, yeah, the opposite is true too. So, and that's what I'm getting at. So on one hand, uh, no, I can't be attached to Todd was this or Todd did that or he was a father or this or that or Todd, period. But on the other hand, Todd is also a divine being. He's not that story. He's not those those labels. He is an identity. And in this particular incarnation, he's Todd and I'm only going to be Todd one time. So, you know, it's time to give it hell. You know, so it's like, again, it's an all or nothing thing. I like your your metaphor, I'll always use a baseball. So like, if I'm going to steal second base, how can I get to second base? If I got my toe on first base, it's never, never going to happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think, I think there's, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I think it's often too, that fear of, of ambiguity and of not knowing what is ahead of us that can stop us from moving forward as well. I think it's often, you know, it's that, that old saying of um, better the devil you know than the one you don't. Sometimes it's easier for us to sit in our pain and, and the discomfort of that than it is yeah. for us to go, what if we just blew this up and, you know, started over? That that can be a scary thought. Yeah, I think this time is, is, is I don't want to say requiring, but there's an expanded, there's an expansion of courage from the heart. It's It's part of the parallel of the expansion period, but... And it is, you're, you're right. We don't know what we're jumping into, but you no, know, like, like the, well, you know, like what I get in my own communion every day is really in, in so many parts of my life, it's whatever got you here is not going to get you there. So yeah. whatever we, whatever vehicles or, mo or modalities or methodologies or whatever we had in the, well, the quote unquote 3d, 
-hmm. it's not going to work out here. It's going to take something different. And I always yeah. hear, create your way out, create your way out. You know, if I get perplexed and, and I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to need money. What are we going to do this? We're going to do that. We got a website. And, and and I'll just hear, create your way out. And a lot of times I just grab the microphone <laughs> and I just I'm gonna get, go to work because at least I'm doing something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome. And I think that's where we, um, I think we put so many filters over ourselves and we're, we're so focused on what society thinks of us and, and the expectations that other people have on us and who we're supposed to be and, yeah. and that it creates this huge, you know, these layers of filters that before we say anything, we, we just restrict everything. Like the amount of people I work on and their throats are just so blocked and it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's just words that have never actually left their mouth. It's all the things yeah. that we would love to say but we're too scared to say them. And the question I would pose is, you know, what if you did just speak, you know, from your heart? And, you know, really like in, in the times where I've done that and it scared the shit out of me and I've been like, oh, my God, what's going to happen if I actually say what I'm thinking? What I've found yeah. is that people, people really yeah. respect it and no bombs go off, nothing yeah. happens, everything is always fine. But it's that it's like we create our own jails around yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Like we are the ones that create the bars. It's no one else that's doing it yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you the one that always got me and, and helped me, but, I mean, it was very painful, was standing in front of the mirror <laughs> in the bathroom and talking to myself. And, but talking to myself, like you're talking about, like, I would say, man, you really did that, dude. You, you know, you did that and you did that and that hurt and that wasn't nice. And, you know, and you have this conversation. Or I did many of them, many of them. I, I haven't done it in a while, but man, I tell you what, I, my body would shake. I would feel like a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have these moments every now and again where um, I was I was sitting down and I was writing the other day and my name was on something and I read it and I heard in my head, Courtney, that's your human name. And I was like, oh, my God, that must have been my spirit at that point because mm -hmm. I, I think we often too underestimate um, that, that who we are in the world today is just a series of masks. Like we have, you know, the masks that we put on when we're the partner, the friend, you know, the employee and all, we're so used to, we're like actors, we're so used to playing all of these different roles that sometimes we forget that there is, you know, one single pure essence that's within us that isn't yeah. trying to be anyone. And it's so, it's beautiful but rare when those moments occur. And if we can create space for for those moments to rise up, it, it can just, you know, give us this brutal simplicity if we allow yeah. it. And once, when it's like anything else, you know, once you cross a line, sometimes that's not a line you should cross, and sometimes it is. And you cross that line, the next time it's easier, and you go a little further. I, yeah. I really think that's what that's what's happening. <clears throat> you know, if you try to put things in a in a, you know, like in a layman's terms or like just human being terms, like what does that really mean? All this all this woo woo stuff. Well, <clears throat> that the that what we might call that essence or the higher self is actually we're, we're that's permeating through us at a rate we can handle. Mm. And uh, I know this period that just went by this, this <laughs> hell hole that they call a uh, mercury retrograde. Yeah. Uh, I did pretty good through it. You know, I really did. I, I spent most of my time broadcasting, eating and sleeping <laughs> yeah. and not yeah. talking to anybody. And, uh, but uh, at, there was a point and I had some pretty, and I, and I talked about it and I wrote about them but I had some pretty powerful dimensional experiences. But uh, one of the things that happened, and it was that real subtle way, you know how some of that stuff is like really like, you know, fireworks are going off and, and you're seeing this and, and, and this, but this was that real subtle, you know, that essence just comes in and goes beep like that. And what I got was that I got that. I'm in you. I'm in you now. Mm -hmm. I'm here. It's me. It's you. Let's, let's, Let's yeah. uh, follow our bliss now. It was kind of like that, which was nice in the middle of Mercury retrograde to get, get a message like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I have an astrologer friend who actually told me that because I was like, oh, I always find Mercury retrograde to be pretty, like, okay. Like, I don't tend to have too many bumps. And she said, oh, it's caught. It's because you were born in a Mercury retrograde. So you kind of were born into that. But what sure. really messed me up was um, was the supermoon. And yeah. 
yeah. I had quite a few moments where um, I, I felt like I didn't know who I was at all. And I was speaking to um, quite a well-known psychic the other day and asking her for some advice because I, I have my own mentors and, and you know, human yeah. teachers that help me through my, yeah. I guess, evolution. And, and she was like, Court, that's the best place for you to be. Like when you don't know who you are, you're actually closer to where you should be. And I think that's yeah. a misconception. And then I had, you know, I think it was the next night and I was said to my partner, I was like, God, I feel really good again. And then I was like, oh, I feel like I'm ready to go out all guns blazing. And then I said, hang on, is that my ego though that's taking control? It's yeah. taking the, the driver's seat again. And But, yeah. yeah, it's just like this perpetual process. It is. Morgan talks about that talks about uh, in fact she wrote a post a couple of days ago and it was a lot like what you said she's like i don't even know who i am uh you know and just went on and on and on a very you know uh, but uh, she also talks about how when when that shift comes it, it then the ego pops its head up and yeah you want to say wow i'm i'm smart <laughs> or whatever yeah. the, case. the super moon that that night i had uh it's pretty pretty that's the one i wrote about that that night i had some some stuff going on in my bedroom and also in the field next door but uh, i would have to say i never really pay attention to this stuff and uh when that when that came out i noticed it was there and i'm like man that stuff doesn't apply to me i'm not going to listen to any of that and uh and but there definitely was something happening and uh and i think a lot of people were were going uh, into solitude and going through the type of thoughts that you and Morgan are talking about. Yeah. Well, I didn't I didn't realize it was either. The only indication I had is I was like, "Wow, Court, you are particularly freaking crazy at the moment." Like one minute yeah. I'd be laughing and then the next minute I'd be like on the couch in a ball of tears and I thought there's something going on. And um sure enough it was it was the supermoon, which was apparently bringing up all kinds of old wounds and and trauma. I don't, know. So. I don't know. It's yeah, it was, it was intense. It was very intense. And, uh, and I guess it just, uh, the retrograde just ended a couple of days ago. I didn't get, I didn't really ever break down. I might've had mm -hmm. a five minutes of this, you know, four or five times, but, but a couple of days ago I was driving, you know, I was driving all these shows and, and, you know, working, 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 working and, and, and loving it. And we just kind of hit, a threshold at Sology, you know, it, it just something kind of happened, and it was a, I guess, a good thing, like a little bit of stability, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just started bawling, man. I just, I was sitting here and I just started. I was writing the morning. I said, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, cry I'm crying, you know. And I just started bawling, and it was, I think, it was just like this huge, huge uh, force left my body, like, mm -hmm. like. It was raw emotion, but it was also like Krishna was talking about. It was that stuff, that judgment and, and that self-judgment and self-deprecation and all that crap yeah. seemed to be leaving. And it was a humility that brought those tears. You know what I mean? It was just like, wow, this is happening to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think we have a tendency and, and probably largely influenced by social media and things like that, that we always want to put like our best face forward and act like everything's fine. Um, yeah. But, you know, I always tell all the people I work with, like if you feel the urge to cry, just let it come out because it's just energy yeah. that needs to be released. So when I felt tears coming up the other day, I went in and closed all the windows and just let myself, you know, ugly cry, which, you know, a former version of me one. wouldn't. It was a good one, yeah, but a former That's version a of me one. wouldn't. Yeah, I would never. Those. You can't fake no. those. You can't. You know, like when you're a little kid, you're like, well. But no, those ones you're talking about, I haven't had one in a while. I can't remember. Oh, they're amazing. I know. <laughs> yeah. oh, I know they are. I had plenty of them in the last two years when I was traveling around the country and living day by day or <laughs> moment by moment. Yeah. Uh, but, and you know, you would do the work and you're doing the work and you're following the direction and you're like, what the hell, man? Give me a break. <laughs> But uh, I think I, the last one I had was about three or four months ago, right before, right before Morgan came here. I don't know. But those gut-wrenching ones, God, yeah. That's that's like a big – it's like a big smile, really, because it's bring, yeah. it'll bring, it brings in a, a huge shift, yeah. Yes, yeah, super, of super powerful. And they're, they're, they're almost like a healing in themselves because it's kind yeah. of like, like a big um, – 
you know, fireman's hose of stuff just pouring out of your chest, which really, if you can, if you can just immerse yourself in it for 15 minutes or however long it needs to come out, then, you know, that's, that's all energy that you've released, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah I never had equated the uh, physical body with energy until I met Morgan and we'd be doing a session and all, it sounded like indigestion. <laughs> we like, yeah. oh, that's energy moving. I'm like, yeah. what, man? Give me that. And then after that, every time, you know, like it, I might say a, a invocation or, you know, a clearing something, clearing affirmation. As soon as I do it, it's it. Or we would be sitting side by side, you know, doing a joint communion, joint meditation. And like, you see that? You see that? This is happening. And then it would happen. Sometimes it would yeah. happen at the same time. So the tears, the tears, though, those huge, those gut wrenching, the gut wrenching cries are huge, man. That's like a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Just to be able to do that and not judge yourself alone is a lot yeah. of power. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think that's where we, um, we can give ourselves a really hard time for those parts of ourselves, the, the parts that ugly cry that, that we just want to shut off because they're not pretty, but they're actually, you know, Krishna talks about it being, um, you know, like, like yin and yang and that we are not supposed to be light or dark or to, you know, to be completely light, you know, where we're actually at our most balanced is just walking in the middle and that we need to be able to accept both because if we can't do that, it's, it's exhausting. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's, Maybe that's part of the human, the the uh, mission, is is to uh, because we're emotional. Because yeah. A couple, of, a couple of communications I've had with, whatever, that's what I was told. I was told you guys have emotions, and you and your, your ability to uh, convert those emotions into your creative flow is something that the universe is like learning from, basically. But maybe. Maybe the other part of that too is to uh, is to be in balance with these emotions, because that's a mm. that's a pretty heavy deal. Emotions are a heavy deal, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had something interesting come through the other day, um, and Krishna was talking about how when we when we allow ourselves to experience all the emotions within us, that it also helps the spirit world have more empathy for what we're going through. As well, it's kind of like we're connected by a phone line and they're on the other end of yeah. it. And so the more we can show what we're going through, the, the better able they are to support us as yeah, well. And I think it keeps man. them grounded too. <laughs> Have some mercy, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. No, that make, that, but, you know, that makes sense. And, again, everything parallels, right? So, like, I know yeah. for me it was huge. And I think I told you this last time, but, like, five months ago, six months ago, I started to, to accept my emotions. So if I was angry... I'd be like, you know, I'd tell Morgan, she'd be like, you want to clear it? I'm like, no, I want to be angry. I want to feel this anger or sadness or whatever it would be. So I can see where, where us owning that, uh, yeah, they would, uh, they'd be able to pick up on that. Yeah. Well, anger is something that I really struggle with. And, and, and that's been a big personal battle for me because to myself, I'm like, well, you're supposed to be this spiritual being and you're tapped into you know, deities and you have conversations with them. How is it you can get angry about, you know, the house being messy or like stupid first world things? And and that's where I'm learning to accept that, yeah. you know, whilst I am tapped in, I'm still freaking human at the same time and I'm still prone to blow ups and I'm still learning yeah. um, and that that's yeah. okay. Yeah, well, but it's tough. Yeah, that's, the thing. <laughs> that's, the thing. that's the thing that we all still got work to do. You know, we'll always have work yeah. to do. The universe has work to do. That's why the universe is the universe. You can't expand. It's like, what, what did Krishna say about the yin-yang thing? You know, it's like, but you, you know, you, 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 was it you that said uh, walking into, um, you know, it's ambiguous. You don't know what you're walking into. It's unknown. Well, how, yeah. you, you know, you can't stand here because <laughs> everything keeps moving. So you kind of. You kind of got to take a step, right? I mean, it's it's a weird, it's a weird thing. I don't know if as humans we could ever understand it. 
Yeah, and I think it's like um, so when I when I journey, which is where I um, go for my teachings with my spirit guides, I sit and go into a trance state and journey. And one of my power animals is a dragon, and he takes me up to this volcano. And so sometimes when I'm raging, um, he'll take me up there and show me this volcano. And he's like, "Caught, you got to let the lava out little bits at a time because if you let it all sit and cook for too long you're going to take out the whole village and then that's painful for everybody so and that's that's the same with our emotions and I think the tendency that we have is that we just try and lock it all away but then there's definitely a you know a physical and emotional um, and potentially even you know a soul cost for doing that in that 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 door, that door isn't strong enough to keep it all in there forever it's like water that builds that eventually will burst through so if yeah. we can do just open it a little bit and then close it that's yeah. a better place for us to be more sustainable i think there is, I think, I think there, is uh, there has been some some bruises to the soul in these mm. incarnations this, or even this incarnation i mean I, I really do i think it went that deep you know I mean, I really do. It's it, that that's not an illusion. I mean, mm. if the soul for the soul to expand again. I mean, you got to have the contrast. If the soul's all fluffy, love and light, <laughs> and everything's fine, then you know, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. What's going yeah, on? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we we just so like so much of what I get when I work with people is um is past lives, and that we you drastically underestimate how much. Who we were in the past, you know, whilst it's made us who we are today and that can be incredibly beautiful and that we've got potentially thousands of years of knowledge that's sitting there and wisdom inside of us. There's also some really heavy wounds that we're carrying. So whilst mm -hmm. we can think that, you know, hey, I've got, you know, five bags of emotional baggage from this life, you've probably got like a whole airport hangar worth of stuff that's sitting right. there as well. And so it's being aware that we're we're more complex than the physical body that we see and that there is, you know, a whole, a whole space of stuff that we need to clear as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And do you, do you I mean, we've had to clear as a team, as collective or whatever, quite a bit. We've had to, mm -hmm. man, we bust in our asses. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. so, I mean, obviously what's happening outside of us so to speak is is matching what's happening inside of us I mean, you would think it, it is i mean you would think that's how it works i mean it, it's a perfect order that's that yin yang christian was talking oh it seems like we've frozen uh this is weird it's happened at the end of every show today <laughs> I look, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. you know, it happened at the exact moment at 55. I'm looking like at 55 minutes or five till the shows are. It happened yeah. on, on the other two shows. How weird. It's, it's the energy. I'm convinced it's the energy. It's nothing nefarious. It's actually the energy, mm. the love vibe. Yeah. Crazy. This is insane. Are you there? I'm not sure. I can't. She's frozen to me. God, Hello, lady, man. Well, <laughs> hmm. Let's see now. That's three today. I guess they want us to keep it to 55 minutes every time. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Courtney, I don't know if you can hear me. You're frozen. Yes, I can. On my end, and I can't hear you. Uh, I'm going to give it a second. Let's see. Hold on. Now she's gone. Oh, here she is. Okay. We're going to push right through this. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Three times, three shows. And actually, it happened yesterday, too. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So are you, st are, are you work? You have two books out, right? Um, so there's there's one book out at the moment, and then I've got two um, other manuscripts from Krishna that are yet to be published. But I yeah. share little tidbits of them on um, on social media. Excellent. Yeah. And then you do you do energy work. Yes. With, with your guides, you do energy work, right? Yeah. So I, I work with um, with Krishna, Isis, the Egyptian goddess, uh, Mariana, who's my Aztec healer, and uh, Mara, who's a white witch. So we we work on 
there are there are no limits to to what we can work on but i always say to people the best place to start is you know how you're feeling mentally emotionally physically and if you've got any questions for them because they they always love to chat so yeah yeah that's a, that that's a great five sim that make a hell of an energetic basketball team <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's actually quite amazing watching them work because they'll all be i mean krishna always takes the lead um but they're all doing their own things all at the same time and they all have different energies running through and so i it's like i've got binoculars and i'm looking around and and my job is to describe everything that happens and what they say oh, very cool yeah and you do that you do that online you can do that yeah uh, yeah yeah so most of my clients are in the us funnily enough even though i'm here in australia um mm -hmm. but yeah it's beautiful beautiful work and um far more fulfilling than the uh, corporate job i used to do in the past yeah yeah we talked about that we had a very similar yeah yeah it. yeah and how do people how do people find you um just find my website which is www.courtneybeck.co uh and my social media so you can find me on an instagram at courtneybeck.co as well okay perfect somebody put that up they usually do they usually do put it up all awesome. right. Thank you. Well, we, we, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And let's uh, remember this 2019 is a year of uh, collaboration, co creation, and supporting each other. So, yeah, uh, it's a sharp, sharp sister here. Anybody uh, needs a little energy work, hit her up, hit her up, pay it forward, gift it forward. I look forward to collaborating with you again, with you and or your partner, either way. And uh, I'll reach out to you. Morgan and I'll reach out to you in the next, you know, next couple of weeks or so. Six, awesome. Is that cool? Yeah. Thank you very much for having and, me. And thank you to everyone for yeah. tuning in as well. And I'll talk to Gop and I'm going to take you up yes. on the Krishna session for sure. I'm going to talk yeah, to him. Yeah, absolutely. Him. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, be fun. Cool. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Bye. We'll see you all tomorrow. we got five shows tomorrow, so it's going to be a nice full day. <laughs>